hit the record button so we know we're recording it. And yes, John, you're exactly right. Mentimeter is super cool, isn't it? And, and with Mentimeter, just as an aside to the webinar, with Mentimeter, those two questions that you, I asked, you can do that on Mentimeter for free. There is a paid for version. So if you want more of the, uh, the, the functionality of Mentimeter and ask loads of different types of questions, then you can do that with a paid for version. Um, but you can ask two questions and use the slide deck in there for free. So it's a great tool to get some engagement for you guys when you are doing webinars and you are doing uh, seminars and workshops as well. So welcome. Thank you for taking the time uh, to come and join us on this workshop, which is, as you can see, five ways um, to, um, to make massive profits in your business. We really appreciate your time being here today because um, we know how, uh, how difficult it is um, to find time to do the things which are really important uh, for your business. You know, there's an old saying, who's heard that old saying that you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. Um, you know, there's 168 hours in every week. And um, for us, it's about having that clarity and focus on how you spend your time in business, which is really important. Um, you know, for us, business doesn't have to mean busyness. Busyness for me, it's like Einstein's definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. So in business, make sure that you're making a difference, that you, you look at how to do things differently, that you learn how to do things uh, differently. And um, make the most of your time and your learnings today. There's some things that you can do to make the most of your, of your time in today's webinar. If you just sit there and listen to this webinar, then studies tell us that you'll retain around about 7% of, of the, the stuff that we talk about today and the learnings that you could get from it. If you take notes, then you'll probably retain around 50%. So have a pad and a pen with you. And if you've got colored pens, even better because colored pens are a great way of retaining information. There's something about having colors on your page your brain sees that as pictures and retains pictures more readily than it retains just words. So use highlighters, use colored pens to retain it. Even more important, if you participate, and if you put questions in the question box, answers in the, in, in the chat box, whatever you want to do, then you will retain even more, up to 90, 95%. So participation is the key to this. And how you invest your time is, is the key to business success for us. If you look at the most successful business leaders, they will have absolute clarity and focus on how, how they spend every minute of the day. So we're going to reward your time today with some of the just the simplest and easiest and fastest ways to increase your income with just a few of, of action coaches, examples from our toolbox of systems and strategies um, that have been successful over the last 27 years. I'm just going to tell you just a tiny little bit about Action Coach and about me, um, just so you understand who it is he's talking to for people who've not heard of Action Coach before. Uh, Action Coach started 27 years ago by a guy called Brad Sugars, and we've now got 1,100 coaches in 88 countries around the world, and we've got 240 coaches here in the UK. Um, the numbers don't mean anything. What's important to understand from that is that when you work with an action coach, you're not just working with one coach, you're working with 1,100 coaches around the world. Because if I haven't got the answer to a particular challenge that we might have with you as a client, I know for sure that somebody else somewhere um, has dealt with that challenge with the half a million business owners that we've worked with around the world over the last 27 years. So we put a note on our forums, we get an example back that we can share with, with you as the business owners. Um, for my background, I've been in coaching for over 30 years now. I started in high performance sports. I was a skydiving instructor um, and I used to take people like you and I uh, on a Saturday morning who thought they were about to die and convince them that it was perfectly reasonable to throw themselves out of a, a, of a perfectly serviceable airplane. And then we'd take more experienced skydivers up to 10,000 feet. Three or four of us would jump out the back of the airplane at the same time. And then I'd coach them while we're in free fall. Don't worry, everybody, we're not going to ask you to do that today. But if you do want to do it, we can get it sorted for you. Um, I've, I've been in sales and marketing all my adult life. I've run, um, I've worked with and for small family businesses, Fortune 500 companies. Um, I ran a company more recently, took that from a profit making to a, a, 
uh, uh, from a loss name to a profit name coming from 750,000 to 1.4 million with 12 employees in the space of three years uh, as co-owner and managing director. And I started Lancashire Business Growth, which now trades as Action Coach Bolton uh, two years ago. So I've been in coaching one way or another in leadership and management all of my um, adult working career, as well as, as um, chucking people out of aeroplanes. So um, what I'd like to ask you now is what's your definition of a successful business? So let's get you in the chat box. Let's have 100% participation now. So put in the chat box, what is your definition? How would you describe a successful business? So come on, we've got a few of you on the call this morning. Let's have one to you putting into this. So for Bernadette, it's fulfilling. That's a great way of looking at it. Joan, one that's respected and sought after. Nikolai, brilliant. Do what you want when you want. Profitable. <laughs> Sorry, Matt, I'd expect nothing less from you. Profitable and works without you. Exactly. Okay, so our uh, we have got one or two people from other action coach businesses on this call this morning. So welcome to Sarmad and, and to Marwan. Um, so our definition of a successful business is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. That's not to say that you don't have to work out, be outside of the business. If you love what you do, of course you can work in the business but you've got that freedom to choose what you do and when you do it. The business owner's role is to work on the business, not in the business. But I've got clients who are in the trades and, you know, I've got a, I've got a guy who's an electrician. He just loves getting on the tools, but now he's got that freedom to choose when he got, gets on the tools and when he doesn't. Um, you know, we've got other people who, who, I mean, look at me. I love coaching. I can't see a time where I'll ever stop coaching, but, my business will give me the choice on, on when and how I do that. So really, really important. A commercial profitable enterprise that can work without you. And it's about working on your business, not in your business. So, um, you know, for you guys, ask yourself that question. Could you let me give you a challenge? It's one that we often um, talk about when we're at networking meetings. If um, I said to you, right, here's a challenge. Go away on holiday for 47 days. You're not allowed to take your mobile phone. You're not allowed to take your laptop or any other way of communicating with the office. And they're not going to speak to you unless the building is falling down. Uh, Warren, don't worry about it. We'll come back to that later. Um, so don't worry about that, Warren. So your company won't communicate with you unless the building is on fire. You're not allowed to communicate with them. What would happen to your business during those 47 days? Would your business continue to find new customers and to onboard new customers? Would it continue to not only make you a profit, but make you more profit and continue to grow without you? Would it continue to, uh, with your existing customers, turn them into raving fans of your business and make sure they're absolutely 100% over the moon and surprised with everything that you do? And would it continue to build profit for you to enable you to have the life that you dream of? Or not? So ask yourself that question. If you can answer yes to those questions, then congratulations, you've got a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. If you can answer yes to all those questions, then Action Coach can help. Working with an Action Coach will help you to build that commercial profitable enterprise that works without you, as we've done over and over again with, with companies in the UK and all over the world. So I'm going to ask you some questions to get you thinking about what, why you've created your business and what it means to you. So um, ask yourself these questions now. What revenue is your business generating? Where do you live? What kind of area do you live in? What kind of house do you have? What do you drive? What investments have you made? What are your tra and travel plans might be a little bit impacted at the moment, but you know, like all my clients are thinking next year, the year after the year after that. What are your travel plans? What are your family enjoying? And how much time are you 
spending working in the business right now. So this is where we want you to think about the possibilities about what your business can do for you. In five years, let's ask those same questions. What revenue is your business generating now? What would you like it to be generating in five years time? Now, where do you live? Now, what are you driving? Now, what investments have you made? Where have you been? Where have you traveled to? What have you seen? What have you experienced? What is your family enjoying now in five years time that they weren't enjoying five years ago? And now how much time are you spending working in the business? What are your dreams? Where do you want to be in five years time? This is where it gets exciting. If you can start looking at your longer term vision, you know, um, Stephen Covey in, in, um, in Seven Habits of High Successful People um, wrote to begin with the end in mind. So what are your long term dreams? What are your dreams for the business? Really important that you understand what you want your business to give you and then build a plan to make sure it can do that for you. So let's have a look at some of the keys to business success. And the first one is all about leverage. And leverage comes in three forms. It comes uh, four forms, I should say. People, systems, technology, and sales and marketing. So in technology, look at systemizing the routine and, and humanizing the exceptions. Systemize whatever you can in, in your company. Um, systems are your key to ultimate leverage in your business. Leverage is about doing more with less. Leverage is also about how you spend your time. Um, so think about the things that you're spending your time on right now. Are you spending your time in your business on the high value stuff, the stuff that can generate huge returns for you? Or are you spending your time doing the 10 and 15 pound an hour tasks? Leverage your own time and leverage the time of everybody else in your organization and use systems to enable you to do more with less. People, of course, are your greatest asset. And if you can get a great team working for you, then that's helping you to be able to work on your business rather than in your business. Now, getting on to the, the, the main core of what I wanted to talk about today, uh, these five ways. Some people think, um, sales and marketing is um, an expense. You know, how much is it gonna cost me for this marketing strategy? How much is it gonna cost me to, to, to get somebody doing me, me pay-per-click stuff for me? Um, why is it an expense? Should it be an expense? Well, in most cases, yes, because marketing campaigns do cost money because they're poorly conceived. You know, Eight out of 10 ads don't work. And if eight out of 10 ads don't work, the two that do work, it depends on the structure of them as to whether they're going to give you a return on investment or not. And, you know, we've got a book that we read quite often. Uh, and in that book, the author states that, you know, you can get two ads for the same products where one ad sold 19 and a half, 20 times as much as the other ad. So if you can find the right ad, all of a sudden your marketing goes from being an expense to being an investment. And we see sales and marketing as an investment. So for every pound out, more pounds should come in. So how are you looking on your marketing at the moment? Are you looking on your marketing as an investment or are you looking at it as an expense? How are you measuring that? Why is that true for some businesses and not for others? The most important part about this is what most people fail to do with their marketing, which is to test and measure. Test and measure each element of what you do. There's two sides to marketing, of course. There's your acquisition cost. So just to give you a quick example, if you invested £300 in advertising and you got 10 customers as a result of that, then you've paid £30 for each of those. And then how can you reduce that? How can you reduce that 
acquisition costs for those customers. Well, if you look at the lifetime value of each customer, if your customers spend £550 a year for six years, then that's £3,300 to you. So acquisition cost and lifetime value are really important when you're looking at marketing, because then you can start to look at how much you are prepared to spend to buy a customer. So if I said to you, um, give me £300 and I'll give you £3,300 back, no tricks, that would be a pretty good deal, wouldn't it? But when you look at it, when you're looking at it from that respect, so if you're looking at a lifetime value, then it becomes easier to look at how you how much you're spending on buying a customer. So start to think about it in different ways. So we're going to look at, at these five ways, proven methods of increasing your profits. If you look, um, if you ask any business owner. You know, we asked you right at the start, what would you like more of? And, you know, some of you wanted time, more time, some of you wanted more profit, some of you wanted more customers. When we talk to business owners, there are three things that they always say they want more of. And that's more customers, more revenue and more profit. But when you look at it, those customers, revenue and profit are only the results of doing other things in your business. And don't forget, we want you to test and measure these. So the first question to ask yourself is, do you know your numbers in each of these areas? So do you know the number of leads you are getting each month? Do you actually have a physical number written down? And do you know from which marketing strategy each of those leads come from? Do you know exactly what your conversion rate is? How many of those leads turn into customers, either weekly, monthly, or quarterly, or yearly? Do you know what your average number of transactions is for each customer? It's easy to work out. Whatever your total number of invoices is, divided by your total number of customers, that gives you the average number of transactions. Do you know what your average sale value is? Your average invoice value. And that's simple to do. Divide your total revenue by your total number of invoices. That will give you your average invoice value. And then do you know what your gross profit margin is? Overall for the business and broken down by products and line. So if you don't know those numbers right now, if you take one thing and one thing only from this webinar, it's to start recording those numbers in each of those areas. And you'll see the impact of that in a short while. I'm going to put some numbers in here, which this is an imaginary company. So um, let's say this company gets 4,000 leads a year with an average conversion rate of 25%. That'll give you 1,000 customers. Because each of those customers on average transacts twice a year. Some could be more, some could be less. And on average, they spend hundred pounds. Could be more, could be less your revenue will be 200,000 pounds. 1,000 times two times 100. If your gross profit margin is 25%, that will give you a gross profit of 50,000 pounds. Now we will go on further when you're working with us as a client to look at your overheads and your net profit because it's net profit, which you know is obviously it's, it's, it's that number which is even more important to you. But let's focus on these five areas to start with. So we're going to look at each of these areas in turn. Let's start by looking at the number of leads and focusing on what we can do in each of these key areas. So if all you do is look at the number of leads you're getting and then start to measure that number so you know where you're getting those leads from and what strategies you've got for getting those leads. If when you're working with your coach, all I do with you is say, right, what's working? Let's do more of it. What isn't working? Let's do less of it. And then start to implement one or two new strategies on that. All the period of a year, it's going to be easy to get just a 10% increase on that. And most of our clients go much, much further than that in terms of lead generation. Let's give you a quick example. I'm working with a, a client over in Bury, sort of print web design kind of company. And they had a, a deal with one of the local uh, marketing companies 
Um, it's an organization called Bestonbury, and they were investing in um, a space on their website to be promoted, um, a catalog that went out to all local businesses once a year. And they also supported and sponsored their annual awards event as well. And in the region, it was costing him, in, in, well, in the region of £3,200 a year for that investment in marketing. So the next question I asked him was, how many leads have you got from that? And he was sort of six months into his, his second year of doing this. He had no idea what he'd got in the first year because he hadn't asked anybody how they first heard about it. And that's the start to recording the number of leads you're getting. Make sure you ask all your clients, all your new clients, how did you first hear about us? So we looked at it and we sort of figured out from the customers that he got, that he got two leads in that previous six months. So we extrapolated that and said, right, you've got four leads. Let's say over the 12 months, you've got four leads. So four leads in 12 months. So those, uh, sorry, four customers in that 12 months. So those four customers have cost you £3,200. So if you've got those four clients in, in that period of time, what's been your average revenue from those clients? How much revenue would you have made in that year from them? He worked out that he'd made round about £4,000 of revenue from that £3,200 investment. He said, that's all right. Four grand for £3,200 investment. I went, yeah, that's okay. What's your gross profit? on those sales and his average gross profit was round about 40 percent so he'd made 1600 pounds in gross profit from his investment of 3200 pounds in that marketing strategy so i said go home and see your wife at the end of the day today say some bloke came into your shop and he said if i give you 3000 if you give me 3200 pounds i'll give you 1600 pounds back what do you think she'll say you know, well she's not going to be right happy with that is she so that was actually costing him money. His business would have been in a better position if he'd done nothing with that strategy. So he stopped doing that. And we looked at one or two other strategies, which we figured out were working and invested some of that money he'd invested previously in the other marketing strategy into other areas, which increased the number of leads he was getting fourfold. So he got much more than a 10% increase. He stopped pouring money down the drain in one marketing strategy and invested it in a strategy which was getting him more leads. So what are you doing with your lead generation strategy? Be really interesting to know from you all, how many lead generation strategies do you actually have right now? So if you just want to pop in the chat box, just put a number in there. How many lead generation strategies do you have right now? And then I can take a quick drink. Seven from Nikolai. How about everybody else? How many, how many have you got coming in? Great, let's have 100% participation from you all. How many, how many lead generation strategies have you got? If you, if you haven't written them down, if you're trying to figure them out in your head right now, if you're going, oh, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that, then maybe the first point to start with it's just to get a piece of paper and write down. Yeah, Neil can see your response. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Marwan's still developing. That's great. So write down your individual lead generation strategies on a piece of paper. Do a column and then ask every single new lead that you get, where did you first hear about us? And put a tick next to the strategy that they came from. And do that over a period of time for a month and start looking, then you can see where you're getting, where, where you're investing your time and money and where you're getting a return from. Okay, so if we can, do you think it's reasonable? Let's just have a yes or no in the answer box. Do you think it's reasonable if we do more of what works, less of what doesn't work, and then add some new strategies that we can get even just a small 10% increase on that number over a year? Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. So that'll take to 4,400 strategies. Let's look at conversion rates. How can you impact your conversion rate? If, if lead generation is marketing, then conversion rate is sales. You know, we've got 
83 lead generation strategies in our Action Coach toolbox. We've got another, I think, 80 or 70 or 80 odd in, in terms of conversion rate. So look at the different things that you can do in terms of conversion rate, in terms of different strategies to improve those numbers. Things like, have you got a sales process? Have you got a written sales process already boxed off for each area of your business? Do you test and measure each part of that sales process? Do you have sales scripts? Even if it's just you and your business, <clears throat> excuse me, even if it's just you and your business, if you're not using sales scripts and you're just doing stuff from the top of your head every time you speak to somebody, how can you test and measure what works and what doesn't to take them to the next stage of the process? When was the last time you got any sales training? When was the last time you looked at anything around overcoming objections or asking great questions or understanding and communicating better in terms of other people's behavioral profiles? There's so many different um, strategies that you can use to improve your conversion rate. Let me give you a quick example. We work with a, a, a tire company and it's an independent tire company. It's like the um, National Tire Services, ATSs of this world. And they have a, a couple of guys on the phones um, who take incoming calls onto the phones. And if you're like me, when you want a new tire on your car, you'll ring up two or three of these companies and you'll say, I need a price for a Michelin 1.5 by 285 slash seven. I can't remember what they're called, you know. Um, and the guy on the end of the phone will go, yeah, uh, just hang on one minute. Um, that'll be £185. And you go, right, thanks a lot. Um, I'll be in touch. Put the phone down, you ring round, and then you find out where you can get the cheapest tire. Um, he had no uh, scripts in place for the guys on the phone. And I asked him what his conversion rate was. And he said, mm, I don't know, not measuring it. Um, but I guessed around about 55%. So he guessed that just over five, between five and six out of every 10 calls that the guys were getting turned into a client in his workshop for a new tire. So the first thing we did is started to measure his conversion rate by you know, obviously recording the calls, re uh, not rec uh, recording the number of calls, um, recording how many people were coming into the workshop as a result, checking back, you know, the phone calls against one another, against the people who were coming in. Turned out his conversion rate was actually 17%, not 55%. So you can imagine what was going on in his head. Um, he, did, he actually swore when he, when, he, when he saw that number. For a coach, obviously, um, you know, we were, we were dancing inside because, you know, a conversion rate at 17% is easy to start increasing. So all we did is helped him to put a simple script in place for the guys who were on the phones. Just a simple question. And when somebody rang in and said, um, can you give me a price for this tire? The guy on the end of the phone would say, certainly, sir, I can absolutely help you with that. Just so I know how to help you best, would you mind if I asked you a couple of questions? And everybody went, yeah, yeah that's all right, yeah. Um, nobody's going to say no to that. And then they just asked them two or three questions around um, the kind of driving they were doing, how, what the budget was, um, how many miles they were going to be doing, how long they were going to be keeping the car, um, you know, what kind of, uh, whether they were doing long distance, short distance driving, motorway driving, or, you know, all the kind of questions that would determine what kind of tyre would be best suited for that particular person at that particular time. So the customer on the end of the phone was really happy because they felt that the person in the business really cared about them and that they were getting the right, exactly the right products for them. Um, the garage owner was very happy because when we tracked his conversion rate, it went from 17% to 47%. That's a massive increase in conversion rate just by implementing one simple script that we then tested and measured. So what could you do in your business to look at your conversion rate? It'd be interesting to see at the moment, can I just have a, 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 a yes or a no? Are you measuring your conversion rate at the moment? Let's just have a yes or a no in the chat box from you all. Not yet. <laughs> or I will be from today. So think about how many leads you're getting. You need to measure your number of leads coming into the business to be able to measure your conversion rate, of course. So think about how many leads you're getting in and then start measuring your conversion rate. And it's an easy number to measure once you know how many leads you're getting, you'll know how many customers you're getting. 
and then you can work it out from there. So I'm guessing that if we put some new strategies, if we do exactly the same thing, work on what works, do more of what works, do less of what doesn't, and then focus on one or two new strategies and with your coach, implement one at a time, make sure it's working, test and measure it, and then do more of what works, you can increase this by at least 10%. You know, that you saw, you heard that example just then, but let's say it's just 10% increase, which takes it from 25 to 27.5%. And that gives you 1,210 customers. That's already, already a 21% increase in the number of customers. If we look at doing the same on the average number of transactions and increasing that by 10%, there are some really easy ways to look at increasing the average number of transactions with your customers. And the first question would be, how many customers do you already have? Do you have a great customer database with their contact details on? A customer database right now is like gold dust. We're in a really challenging time at the moment and your existing customers, those who are really, really happy with your service, those who are raving fans and advocates of your business, they're the ones who are really important to you right now for a number of different reasons, not least, being able to refer you to other potential customers. But if you've got this big list of customers, think about how many of your products are they actually buying? We've got a company that we've been working with, a signage company. And one of the very first things he said to me was this, he gets really frustrated with his customers. I went, well, that's interesting, why is that? And he said, well, we do these fantastic facials for the shops and we do these fantastic graphics on the windows inside. And then I'll be driving down the road past their shop, admiring the handiwork, because they do a great job, admiring the handiwork. And we'll see these A boards outside and banners that they've had done, but they haven't had them done by us. And I get really frustrated because they've bought these great, you know, these great signage stuff off us, but then there's all this add-on business that they're giving to somebody else. And my first question to him was this. Have you told them that you do this stuff? And his answer was, well, we're a signage company. Of course they know we do this stuff. No, that's not what I asked. I said, have you told them that you've done this stuff? And he said, well, it's obvious, isn't it? We do, we, we're a signage company. It's in the name of the company. Of course we do this stuff. No, that's not what I asked. I said, have you actually told them that you do this stuff and asked them if there's anything else that, in your portfolio that they could buy from you? And the, the simple answer was that he hadn't told them. Now, it might seem like common sense to him that if you're, if you're a signage company, you've got sign in the name of your company, that they will come to you for all their signage requirements. But quite often our customers don't realise things like that. And if you don't go and ask them to buy more often from you, then the chances are they're going to go somewhere else. So number one strategy, go and ask your customers. Number two strategy, make sure they know everything that you do. Quite often with our one-to-one -one clients, so when you're a one-to-one -one client of ours, we'll go and do a customer visit with you. And we'll sit down with the customer with you at the side of us. And we'll say to the customer, um, and this happens 99 times out of 100 when we go with a client of ours, uh, Mr. Customer, Mr. Client sells, um, I can see that you A, B, well, miss, the, the, the customer buys A and B. But we'll say to them, look, Mr. Customer, uh, Mr. Client sells A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. We know that you buy A and B, and you've bought a little bit of C in the past. Um, but you haven't bought any D, E, F, G, and H. Did you know about those products? And invariably, the, the customer will say, well, I knew about D and E, but I didn't know about F, G, and H. And if I'd have known about H, I could have bought 3,000 of those widgets last month. So make sure all of your customers know about all of your portfolio. And there's some great tools that we've got to help you to market in, in that kind of area. So increasing your average number of transactions from just two to 2.2 per year with just that small 10% increase is, 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 isn't a challenge. And then looking at average sale value. Think about your average invoice value. And again, if you don't measure it, then start measuring it now. Um, would you all like a cast iron strategy for increasing your average sale value? Let's just have a yes or no in the box. 
or uh, yeah, let's have a yes or no in the box. Would you like a, a cast iron strategy? I'm glad you're all saying yes. Okay, this is really, really simple. Get your pen, get your pad, get ready for this one. So write these words down. Increase your prices by 10%. And you'll all be sitting there now going, oh, I'm not sure if I can do that. But we've done some surveys across action coach clients and customers around the world because a lot of our clients implement these increases. And the numbers tell us that 95% of customers don't say anything. The 5% who do complain are the ones who complain about everything. The ones who are time vampires, those who take all of your time up. They're the ones who pay late, or even worse, don't pay at all. But they're still the complainers. And it's really, it's really interesting when you look at um, discounting and increasing your prices. Um, let Think about it this way. If you increase, if your margin, if your gross margin is 30% right now, and you increase your prices by just 10%, you can afford to lose 25% of your revenue and still make the same amount of profit. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit mind blowing. You can make the same amount of profit and do 25% less work. Now, I'm guessing that all of you would like to make the same amount of money for doing less work or even better for doing the same amount of work, making more profit. So think about average sale value. Think about how you can increase the prices. And I'm not suggesting for one minute that you all just go, right, dial the prices up by 10%. Don't say anything to anybody and see what happens. We've got some great strategies to help you in terms of increasing your prices over time to your client base. But we've got another 60, 70 odd strategies to help you with average invoice value, you know, including add on sales. What else can you sell to somebody at the same time that you're selling them the product that they're buying anyway? And, you know, the easiest example I can give you of that is our good friends at Mackey D's, McDonald's. Would you like, would you like that large? Would you like to add fries to that? You know, think about those kind of things, those those kind of add ons that you can get for your for your business. And it might be stuff that you're not doing at the moment that you might want to start doing so you can add them on to increase your average sale value. But increasing your average sale value by just 10 percent will give you a, a, a hundred and ten pounds rather than a hundred pounds. So out of those four strategies there, do, let's just have a quick. Um, Bernadette, that's a great question. Um, so, um, with services, you can do it in exactly the same way. Whatever service you've got, what else can you sell them at the same time as you are selling them that base service? You know, we get we work with a, a couple of VAs, virtual assistants, and they've got maybe twenty different services that they offer. So they might start off by um, maybe answering the phones on their behalf or doing a little bit of admin. But what they would say to them is, look, while we're doing that, would you like to do, um, would you like to do, or would you like us to do this for you? Because it'll save you um, 10 times the amount of time rather than just five times the amount of time. So think about how you can add on different, bolt on different services to your offering. We do that with coaching in just the same way. You know, we have clients who are on programs and when, they, when they're on a program with us, we will offer them um, additional bolt-ons to that program. You know, would you like Would you like our action plan and action cash financial planning management software um, added onto your program each month? So there's lots of different ways that you can do it with services as well as with um, products. Does that make sense, Bernadette? Great, lovely. So let's just um, uh, have a hands up on this. Do you all think that these four strategies, if you start to test and measure each one of those, get some baseline numbers, and then working with your coach, working on more of what works, less of what doesn't work, uh, and adding new strategies, that these numbers are reasonable numbers. 
for you. Uh, let's just have a hands up in the in the box if you think there are reasonable numbers. Marvelous, great. So I want to show you the impact of this now on your revenue. This is the compound effect. So your revenue, if you add 10% onto each of these areas, will go from 200,000 to 292,820 pounds. Naturally, if you're working on those four areas, it's going to have an impact on your gross profit margin. If you also um, look at some specific strategies around profit margins as well, then um, it can have a massive impact on your profit margin. But you know things like negotiating with your suppliers, uh, selling more of the higher gross margin products, um, selling more of your higher value services, higher gross margin services. We've got 80 odd strategies to help you improve your profit margin. So if you can improve your profit margin by 10%, that'll give you a profit of £80,525.50. John, I know you've put possibly in there. Um, we're going to have that phone call with that other business that we haven't had yet, just so you can talk to them about how they're working with an action coach and the kind of things that they're putting into place with these five ways that are giving them massive growth and scale up growth. So that's 46% increase in your revenue and a 61% increase in your profits. Just for fun, what if there was a 100% increase though? What could you do with an extra 100% profit? So if you look at these numbers, those are easy numbers, easy numbers. So if you double the number of leads you're getting, double your conversion rate, that gives you 4,000 customers. Double the number of transactions in your average sale. Look at the difference in those numbers. But this is where it, you know, this is where it gets exciting. If you do this consistently over four or five years, then these are the results you'll get from the compound effect. You can go from a, a, a great company making 50 grand gross profit in a year to a, an even better company doing 1.6 million gross profit in a year. And we give all of you the opportunity to have a business strategy session with, with us afterwards, where we'll put your numbers into these calculations. And we'll, we'll look in more detail at your business and at your strategies so you can see the impact it'll have on your business. So if you want one of those business strategy sessions, you can apply for a business strategy session at the end. We'll put a link in the chat box for you. So I'm sure that's the question that a lot of you have got going around in your heads right now. Is it possible to do it in my business? Well, the answer to that is yes. So you've got to start thinking like uh, an entrepreneur. You know, all the best business leaders already have their five year, three, five year goals in place. And for our clients, we help them to get their long term goals in place and then build a plan to help take you from here where you are now to where you want to be. But you've got to change the way you're doing things now. If you do this, if you do the same things over and over again and expect different results, it's not going to happen. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So hold on to your dreams, set some goals, and then build some plans as a result of that. So let me ask you a question. What would you do with an extra 300 hours this year? if you were working on your business rather than in your business and you had a great team to run the business, what would it be for you? Would it be more time with important people? Um, I want to leave you with a couple of quotes. Jim Rohn, who is an amazing business guru, no longer with us, unfortunately, bless his, rest his soul. Um, and I've, I've read a lot of his stuff. And there was two quotes that always stick with me. One is this, never wish your life was easier. Wish that you were better. In order to earn more, you've got to learn more. Somebody said to me a while ago, Paul, your business will only rise to the level of your incompetency as a business owner. And that really struck home with me. In order for my business to get better, I've got to get better. So work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And 
Um, to leave you with a quote from, from Action Coach's founder, Brad Sugars, it looks a bit different to that photograph now. Um, where you'll be in five years' time will depend on the books you read, the people you associate with, and most importantly, the actions that you take. I always say to people who come onto these webinars and workshops that webinars, workshops, coaching, training, all of this stuff doesn't work. What works is the actions that you take afterwards as a result of what you've learned on these. So if all you do is make some notes, put them in a book, close your book, put it in the drawer, and then do nothing and go back to working in the business on the hamster wheel of business, then you've just wasted an hour of your time. If you want to take some specific actions, if you want to take some specific time out to look and apply these to your business, then by all means, start doing some of the stuff that we've told you to do. Have a business strategy session with us so we can help you look at the areas um, in your business and focus and dig deeper in the areas in your business that you need to work on. Those are complimentary. There's no cost to those. It's just an investment of your time for about 60 to 90 minutes. So it's time to get into action. Um, I'm going to um, just put into the chat box the um, link for you guys. Um, let's hope that this works. There we go. So uh, could I just have a hands up now that you can all see in that chat box the link for the um, for the form. So if you click on that link, it will take you to um, a, um, a Microsoft form. Um, on that form, there's some feedback for us. Um, it's really important for us as a, an organization, and for me in particular, to get feedback. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. So looking at areas we can improve for this webinar. But there's also a link on there so you can apply for your business strategy session. So you can just complete your details on there and then we'll get in touch with you to book in that session with us. So more than happy to spend so all your investments is 60 to 90 minutes of your time um, and we'll make sure we guarantee you'll get some hints and tips out of that session. And if you don't, I'll pay you for your time. We've got a couple of minutes, a few minutes before we finish. Has anybody got any questions for us? So we'll look in the Q and A box. I think you must all be filling your form in. Um, anybody got any questions at all for us? Just stick them into the Q and A box or into the chat box. And uh, if you have any questions, then uh, I'll do my best to answer them now. And if I can't, then I'll certainly get back to you at some point in the future. So give you a couple of minutes just to complete that form. And um, if you have got any questions, just to type those in and then we'll we'll call it a day. So what I'd, I'd like to ask you guys a question, if nobody's got any questions for me. Um, and this question is quite simple. What is your one action point or your one learning point as a result of coming onto this webinar? We talk about, we, we're called Action Coach for a reason and it's because it's all about action. So what are you going to do as a result of being on this webinar today, as a result of the things that you've heard and the things that you've learned and the things that you've written down what are you going to do differently in your business? <laughs> Thanks, Sarmad. It's kind of you to say that. Um, uh, my one and Sarmad, if you do have any questions or, or you want to speak at any point, then feel free to, to drop me a line or give me a call. More than happy to have a chat to you. And welcome to the Action Coach family. So for everybody else on, on the call, and we've got Bernadette, uh, Charlotte, John, Neil, Nikolai, Sylvana, and Warren. If 
from John, it's about uh, 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 increasing your average sale value by putting a price increase in. I love the way you describe that, John, brutally simple fees. Brilliant. Uh, review leads and systems in place. Great. Silvana, um, I would encourage you to make that more specific. So rather than just saying, I'm going to review the leads, be specific, specific about the action you're going to take. So for instance, I'm going to write down the different lead generation strategies and start recording where I'm getting leads from for each one. Nikolai, know your numbers better. What are you specifically going to do, Nikolai, to know your numbers better? How are you going to start recording your numbers and how are you going to start reviewing them, testing and measuring them? Yeah, I get that, John. Brilliant from Neil. Thank you, Neil. Listen, thank you so much to everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure spending um, the last 56 minutes or so with you. Hope you've all learned something from today. Hope you've all got some action points from today. Um, please, please, please take a few minutes after we've finished to review the notes that you've taken today and write down some action points. And brilliant, Warren, that's great. Great activity from you, Warren, there. Uh, and please, if you haven't got this, if you haven't clicked on the link to fill in um, the feedback form and, and request your, uh, your business strategy session, then do that now and we'll get those books in for you. It's been an absolute pleasure. So it just remains for me to say to you all, get into action, be brilliant and have a brilliant end to the week. Uh, we do have another session next week. We have another webinar on the 4th of November about productivity. It's 17, how to get a lot done in a little time. And we've got a really special guest presenter called Michael Heppel on there. And anybody who registers for that webinar gets a free copy of his brand new book called 17, all about productivity. So if you want more time, then book onto that webinar. We'll make sure you get a free copy of the book afterwards for all attendees. I guarantee you will love, love, love Michael Heppel. Um, and we'll talk all about productivity and how to get more folks for any time. Have a brilliant end to the week, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us.